Okay, in this video here, we are going to look at a reaction very related to the aldol condensation called the Claisen condensation. Okay, so in this very simple reaction here, and this is the simplest Claisen condensation reaction one can possibly imagine, we're going to take the ester ethyl acetate, shown here, and we're going to couple two of them together. We're going to use sodium ethoxide as a base, ethanol at reflux. And what we're going to make under these conditions is actually a stable anion. Okay. And I'll explain the reason why that's a stable anion in just a second here. After this is formed, we're going to acidify it with something a little bit more acidic than water. And uh, this is going to form this compound right here, okay, uh, which we refer to as a beta keto ester. Okay, so let's look at the mechanism for uh, the Claisen condensation. The first thing that happens is the deprotonation of the alpha hydrogen, okay, so there's the alpha carbon there, and the hydrogens that are attached to an to that are a little bit acidic. They're not quite as acidic as a ketone. Notice that the pKa of an ester is 25. Uh, so an ester is not quite as good at stabilizing an adjacent carbanion as a ketone is. All right, uh, sodium ethoxide is not nearly strong enough to make this deprotonation process go to completion, but enough of it happens to get the reaction started. Okay, like before with the aldol condensation, I'm going to use the carbanion resonance structure of the anion. And remember that the best resonance structure you can actually write is the enolate resonance structure. Okay, and this is a, an ester enolate because it's derived from an ester. Okay, this anion attacks a Another molecule of the ester that has not been deprotonated yet. Remember, most of them are actually not deprotonated in this equilibrium equation. So once you form an anion, it immediately attacks another one. This does the nucleophilic addition here. And then we displace the ethoxide to get this compound and sodium ethoxide. This is a, just a classic example of nucleophilic acyl substitution. except the nucleophile is a carbon. Okay. All right. The product here, you may think uh, that at this point, you're finished writing the mechanism, but you're really not because this last product has a pK of about 11. Recognize that these alpha hydrogens here are stabilized by two carbonyl groups, okay? Okay, so this is a very acidic compound. The pKa of this compound is estimated to be approximately 11. It's even more acidic than water. So when you displace this to make ethoxide ion and you have this in its present, you can't stop the deprotonation process making this uh, stable anion. I notice that I drew all the arrows here in the mechanism as equilibrium arrows except the last one. This is this last step is really the thermodynamic driving force for the Claisen condensation. If you can't form this stable carbanion, the Claisen condensation typically doesn't go. And we'll see some consequences of that in a few of the examples. Okay, because we have to form the anion, one of the limitations here is that if the, at the alpha position of the ester, you have to have two hydrogens. Okay, because we're removing one right here, and we're removing a, a second one right there. Okay, all right. If the reaction is intramolecular, it actually isn't going to be called the Claisen condensation anymore. It's going to be called the Dieckmann condensation. Okay, so this is, uh, I guess, gives organic chemistry a bad rap every time 
someone discovers something, they slap their name on it, even though it mechanistically resembles another process. Okay. All right, so here is the Dieckmann condensation uh, uh, at the bottom here. It's mechanistically very similar. In this case, we're taking, at some point in the equation, sorry, let me draw it here. We're going to make the anion there, and it's going to attack the carbonyl group there. Eventually, you're going to end up with this system right here, okay? Uh, again, it's going to exist as an anion until someone comes along at the end of the process and adds some something that's a little bit more acidic than water to quench the reaction. Okay. All right, we have the same limitations at, on mixed clasins as we do on mixed aldols. If we tried this simple reaction right here, Claisen condensation between these two, we have two mixed products. Okay, depending on which one serves as the carbanion and which one serves as the carbonyl group. Okay, and we have two also self claisen uh, reactions. In this case, uh, two identical molecules in the system have gotten together. There's, when you have them, all of these reagents to get all of these reactants, these uh, two esters and the sodium methoxide ethanol present at the same time, you can't uh, tell who's going to connect to who. Okay. All right. The mixed clasin condensation becomes okay if one, uh, just like with the aldol, if one partner has no alpha hydrogens, one partner is especially reactive or electrophilic. Uh, and then this is a second step. It's, we'll call this the, uh, this the uh, acyl donor Clayson condensation. And intramolecular reactions where one product is heavily favored. Okay, so let's look at this Dieckmann condensation here. If we try to do this Dieckmann condensation here, remember we had this limitation that you had to have two alpha hydrogens. All right, so in this Dieckmann condensation, the reaction is totally going to occur from this side because this side has the two alpha hydrogens, okay? Uh, it's going to eventually add to that position. All right, so we're going to get the compound that has the methyl here. We're not going to get any of this compound because uh, there's no stable anion that can form from this compound. So this is not going to be the product. Before we acidify, we have this nice stable anion that's between the two carbonyl groups. And the uh, acidification process uh, puts that hydrogen right there. Okay, this uh, compound here is called an oxalate ester. And these are actually quite good in the uh, as acyl donors for the Claisen condensation. Okay, recognize that in here there's no alpha hydrogens. Okay, and when you do the Claisen condensation here, you make this product here. And this is the type of product that's uh, probably going to have a lot of enol character. Let me just add that little detail here. Okay, so we're probably going to see a lot of the enol form here as well. Okay. Uh, There's just too many partial positives around that uh, central carbonyl group, so to not believe that it's going to form an appreciable amount of enol. Okay, here again, uh, benzo-8 esters also have no alpha hydrogens, so they can only serve as uh, acyl group donors, or uh, uh, they can't serve as uh, the carbanion source. So uh, the product that we're going to get from this clays and condensation 
is the product that you see here, the uh, beta keto ester shown here. And again, this arises from essentially making the anion here and having it attack there and doing the other steps of our Claisen condensation. All right, so ketones uh, can condense with an ester that lacks alpha hydrogens as well. Okay, so this is kind of a mixed Claisen aldol. All right, so here we have lots of uh, acidic hydrogens on the ketone. And here we're, we're reacting it with a formate ester. Important point to remember this that this is not an alpha hydrogen and it's not acidic. Okay, a lot of people think that you can uh, pull those off because they're so close to the carbonyl group, but there's uh, when you pull it off, you can't really write any good resonance structures. Okay, so here we're going to uh, treat this with ethyl formate. Again, uh, a nice reactive ester that has no alpha hydrogens uh, and acidify it. And we're going to make the 1,3-diketone shown here. And remember, 1,3-diketones are actually are more stable as uh, enol forms. Okay, and this one, uh, we're going to take the ketone and recognize that one side has two alpha hydrogens. This side over here only has one, so the reaction is going to occur here. Okay, and after we acidify, we're going to make this compound, which again uh, has a high uh, amount of enol character. Let me just stress that before we acidify, okay, uh, we have this nice, sorry. Stable anion right here. And we could never form this nice stable anion if we reacted on this side, okay? Okay, so. This is going to form the product only from attacking the carbon that has two hydrogens. All right, so this is the essence of the Claisen condensation. The rest of this, I believe, is just products. Uh, again, you should pause it, try to do it yourself. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go right to the answers here. But you should pause it and try to do it yourself and then replay it so you can see the answers. Okay, so what's the product of the first one? Here we don't really have an ester, we have an anhydride, but that uh, can do a lot of the same chemistry as an ester. Okay, and the product of this after acidification is this product here. I'm just going to draw the 1,3-diketo form. Remember that these really could be enols. Okay, all right, and in this one, again, uh, at some point we're going to make an anion here, and it's going to attack one of those acyl groups, and uh, it's going to kick out the benzoate group later, okay, if you follow through the mechanism that we showed in a few slides ago. All right, here uh, we, have, we can form an anion on this side, and an anion on this side, recognize that if this anion were to attack that carbon, it's going to make a four-membered ring. And if this anion attacks that carbon, it makes a six-membered ring. All right, so we're not going to consider this pathway because the six-membered ring is much better. All right, so this is the 1,3-diketone that you would get from this reaction, but recognize that uh, this 1,3-diketone, if you form two enol groups, it would actually be a completely aromatic 
naphthalene system. So this is probably all, the only form of the product that you would actually see. Okay, last one. This is a, an example of the Dieckmann condensation. And if we look at the alpha positions, the positions alpha to the ester, recognize that this one has two alpha hydrogens. This one only has one alpha hydrogen. So the uh, anion is going to form here. Okay, and the product that we're going to get is the product at the top. We're not going to see any of this second compound at all. Okay, again, because we can never form the really stable anion that's uh, driving this reaction to completion. Okay, and then the final one, we're just going to do an acidity ranking question. So we're going to rank these compounds in terms of their acidity. The most acidic is number one. The least acidic is number six. And place number two through five where appropriate. And when we get to uh, when we finally decide on a favorite, we're going to write all the resonance structures uh, for that carbanion. Okay, an important point to notice is, uh, is it an ester stabilizing the adjacent anion, or is it a ketone, and uh, how many of them are stabilizing the uh, adjacent anion? All right, so this is a, I'll just write K for uh, ketone, E for ester or lactone. Remember, a lactone is just a cyclic ester. All right, so this is a ketone. This is an ester, this is an ester, this is an ester, this is an ester, ester, ketone, ketone, and this is a ketone, and this is an ester. All right. Okay, so remember that the ketone is better at stabilizing the adjacent anion than the ester is. So we're going to rank this one as number one. Any anion that we form by removing one of these protons uh, is going to be stabilized by two ketone carbonyl groups. We're going to rank this one as number two because removal of this hydrogen gives us an anion beside a ketone and an ester. Ester is not quite as good as a ketone, so two ketones are better than a ketone or an ester. Okay, we have two of them that, uh, sorry, no, uh, we're going to rank this one as number three. This hydrogen here, if we remove it, we get an anion that's stabilized by two ester groups. I'm going to rank this one as number four uh, because it would uh, the anion would be next to a ketone. And this one is number five. I'm saying carbanions, but remember that they're really enolates. And we're going to rank this one as number six because it's not acidic. There are no hydrogen, there are no alpha hydrogens in this molecule, okay? If we look at this system, uh, this carbon here, there's no hydrogen at this carbon, okay? So it's not acidic. All right, so there's our ranking. Uh, this one is number one. So let's go ahead and pull the proton off. Okay, do that, the base comes along, gives us the, we'll uh, say initially the car, we'll just call it the carbanion, but we can write two different enolate resonance structures which with each of the carbonyl groups. If the arrow goes this way, we can write it here. Uh, the arrow can go the other way. 
and this gives us this resonance form here and you can actually interconvert these by drawing multiple arrows. Okay, so this is where this video is going to stop and uh, the next one we'll look at uh, how to uh, just add simple alkyl groups to the uh, alpha position of a carbonyl compound.